three. Hi, my name is Makisa Johnson. I live at Clark Strauss. This is my basketball project phase two. Right now, I'm talking to Robin Snyder, which is my uncle, about how it was being a dental officer. So, how did your career start as a dental officer? Well, to be a dental officer, you have to be a police officer for a minimum of three years. After that, they just send you off for a two-week class, and that was one of the most difficult classes that I've been to. I've been to college, I have a college degree, and this was far more difficult. They cram a lot in in those two weeks, and after the two weeks is over, you certify only for the elementary part, so I was only certified to teach up until the sixth grade, so I went back year after year to be certified for middle school, high school, the parenting program, community program, and then after that I went off to get certified to train police officers to be DARE officers and also military officers, so that was part of my job too. Did you hit any obstacles while you were in training? The difficult thing was since I had been out of college for so long, I had to get back into the studying mode. No one told me that I had to have homework, we have assignments, we have team projects, and that was kind of difficult to get back in that setting at first, but after a few nights, everything kind of fell in place and it was all right. Did you ever regret doing what you do or wanting to do something else? No, I really enjoyed it. Um, I had some thoughts about going in it at first, but once I got into it, I got to travel throughout the United States, all over the world, and I met friends from all over. If I had to do anything else, I think I would want to be like a chiropractor or a professional athlete. Those were some of my dream jobs, so. Can you tell me about your training overseas? Yes, in 2010, I got selected by the Cumberland School of Law from Sample University in Birmingham to go to the Ukraine. And in the Ukraine, we trained police officers, social workers, teachers, attorneys, and some college students too. And while I was there, um, we, uh, this is, we had to have a translator. This is one of the translators here. This is uh, Belita. Uh, most of the Ukrainians could speak English, but they couldn't uh, understand. You had to talk slow. So that was kind of different for me, too. Because you had to say so many words, then you had to stop. She would translate and then start again. It was a challenge, but uh, I've been knowing Belita. She's been to the United States a few times. So we've known each other before we went together before. So that went pretty good. How is the juvenile justice system different in the Ukraine versus the United States? Wow, that's a great question there. Um, in the United States, we have like a second chance for juveniles. The juveniles get in, in trouble. There are tons of programs that they go into, and we have programs available before they get in, in trouble too. Now, in Ukraine, if a kid were to get in trouble, their parent can put them out, and that's it. I'm talking about an eight, nine-year-old kid that can be put out. Uh, some kids were homeless, and that's probably one of the most touching things that I've seen. We went to like a homeless shelter for kids and to see kids there, and one of the things that was a great impact then was something simple. We would have candy. We would give them candy. Uh, parts of the Ukraine, I think it was, uh, Shadiv was the first part that I was in. Um, the kids didn't have money to buy candy. Uh, it was that bad. So. We would take like bags of candy, and I mean, it's like you were passing out five or ten dollar bills. They really enjoy eating that candy, though. Then the Ukraine kids, too. I think uh, uh, our quote over here is like criminal mischief or just bad behavior, or whatever you would consider it being a hooligan. That is an actual Ukraine term on a book, just being a, a hooligan. What was it like being a dare officer then versus now? Well, when I went for my training then, it was a two-week training. We only got certified to be in elementary school. Now they get all of the training. And one of the most different things that's going on now, when we were first trained in the 80s and the 90s, they recommended that the day officer did not have guns when they went into the schools. Uh, this is because uh, some of the smaller kids may uh, fear guns and we want to make sure that we were going to work th work with them and not, you know, come to harass them or arrest them or anything like that. So um, that slowly changed uh, Columbine, pre-Columbine, and some of the school incidents went up as far as violence like that. So every day officer now will carry their guns. I know it's still debatable in some places where they don't want the police officers coming into schools with the guns, but day officers do carry guns in schools now. Well, thank you for talking to me. Thank you. It was great.